And welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I am your host, Louis Sung, and once again, we are going behind enemy lines as I am joined by a very good friend of mine. He was here with the Carolina Panthers game, and now he's going to be joining us for the team he actually covers per professional right now. He is Antoine Staley of the New York Daily News. He's been covering the Jets for a while now, and he's going to have all the inside information we're going to need as the Miami Dolphins face their AFC East rivals for the first time this season. Mr. Antoine, how are you today, sir? I'm good. How you, how you doing? I'm doing great. Your Thanksgiving was good, I reckon. Yeah, I definitely can't complain about that. So, yeah, I hope yours was good as well. No, everything was good. Everything was good. Although, I'm going to – let's go ahead and start with some controversy before we get into the ad reads here. What's the one thing that you cannot go having Thanksgiving without? Uh, I like mac and cheese. I mean, I know uh, a lot of people – some people don't think it's Thanksgiving food, but – you know, I think mac and cheese and, you know, it's definitely one of those foods that you have to have for Thanksgiving. I hear you, man. I, I mean, I would I would absolutely love to get my hands on Thanksgiving as well, but uh, um, for mac and cheese. But if I had to pick something that it would be just not the same, it would have to be either of the casseroles, either sweet potato or green bean. Like I need to have those in order to feel like Thanksgiving has been fulfilled. I can I've been I've done without mac and cheese in the past, but I now that I've had it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I could really go for some mac and cheese. But it has to be good mac and cheese. It can't just be exactly. like craft like macaroni made. and cheese out of a box. It can't be nothing like that. Homemade. Homemade. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Not, Real not mac and football. cheese. Exactly. All right. So I'm if anybody has any uh, thoughts on that, make sure you leave a comment down there below. We'll talk about it. But now let's go ahead and get into some actual football talk. But before that, really quick, want to go ahead and mention, as always, this show is brought to you by our good friends over at PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is the revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues. Whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each, it's up to you to decide. Just choose whether your chosen player will get more or less than their projected stat. They give you free squares, special Special Taco Tuesday promos, Flex Friday special, you can get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you can normally win. So with offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up if you are any kind of a fantasy sports fan. So use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Get the promo code 5, F-I-V-E, go to prizepicks.com, deposit your $100, and let Price Picks give you $100 of their dollars for you to play with and get started winning today. And this show is also now affiliate sponsored by my Nintendo store. Let's face it, folks, we're all gamers at heart, and Nintendo's been there for us for nearly 50 years, creating all-time classics that are remembered by every generation growing up. And right now, they have special deals going on for what are sure to be more top-selling games in Nintendo's endlessly long lineup. Super Mario RPG, a classic from the days of the Nintendo 64, has now been completely remastered from the ground up and has been released as of November 17th for new audiences to enjoy Mario's first-ever RPG adventure, so Go ahead and click the link in the description of this YouTube video to be able to get your hands on that with some bonus items. And also out right now is Super Mario Brothers Wonder, the Mario Brothers latest completely new game that is already receiving rave reviews from both critics and actual gamers alike. Again, just click the links in the description below to order either of these awesome titles and you will be receiving bonus items upon making your purchase. Buy Nintendo Store, your best and quickest gateway to the world of Nintendo. All right, Antoine, so let's get into the, some Dolphins-Jets talk here. So, obviously, the Miami Dolphins currently first place in the AFC East, which I, I feel bad, honestly, for you that you weren't able to cover the Dolphins while you were down here, while they were actually good. Like you were, It was always like some weird drama going on when you were covering them down here in Miami. Now you're with I the had, Jets. I had one playoff season, so, yeah, basically, outside of that, yeah. Yeah, well, one playoff game, bro. One playoff game ever. Like, and yeah. what was that? It was that wild card game that the Steelers just yeah, absolutely insane. demolished the Dolphins. Yeah, with, Matt Moore was starting. Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't a great. It wasn't a great time for us. But uh, now the Dolphins are doing a fantastic job, and now you're covering the New York Jets, which they have some struggles of their own. Although they have themselves a very. I, I, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to be this, nice because I know that they're going to be Jets fans. Maybe listening to this and because they cover you and they and you they follow you and respect you and as they should. So now I want to go ahead and just get into this because as a Dolphins fan, I'm looking at the Jets. And I'm thinking to myself, their offense is definitely not something I should be all that concerned about, aside from some certain weapons there, Brees Hall, uh, Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. Th those yeah. are some guys that I should be looking at and being like, okay, there's some legitimate talent there. But his the, Aaron Rodgers' best friend, Tim Boyle, is going to be the starting quarterback, and he does not exactly have a reputation of being a uh, a great backup, I will say that. And the guy behind him, 
I can't even remember. That's oh yeah, Trevor it's Simeon. Simeon. Trevor yeah. Simeon. Yes, I remember him now. He's like, like like all these guys that have been just journeyman backups all their career. And third string, the third string. This is where it gets very interesting, Antoine. So you've been in the you've been hanging around the locker room. I'm sure you've been covering them for a while now. What's been going on with the whole Zach Wilson situation? How did we get to this point? Well, he's just not playing well. I mean, that's just a simple answer to that. I mean, he since he's taken over for Aaron Rodgers, he had one good game against the Chiefs, and then outside of that, it's been, you know, mediocre play. And I think once you get, you know, the Jets are struggling right now offensively. They went 11 straight quarters without scoring a touchdown. They've scored nine touchdowns all year long, like in 10 games. And to put that in uh, in comparison, the Dolphins scored 10 against the Broncos. So <laughs> Dolphins scored one, one more touchdown in one game that the Jets have it all all year long. So they str- they've been struggling. I think they're thirtieth in, you know, points per game. They really relied on special teams and Greg Zerlon and Thomas Morstead, who's done a good job for them. But when you're not scoring points in this league and they do have a great defense, I think I don't think anybody would argue that. But uh when you're not scoring points, it's gonna be hard to win games in this league. And it's hard to rely on your defense playing well like that every single week and holding teams to nothing. Because basically that's what they have to do in order to win games. And you know, you're facing these prolific offenses and you're gonna have to score points. You're at least gonna have to score twenty points and then to win the games. And you know, I don't think everything is Zach Wilson's fault, you know, with wrong with the Jets offense, but I think a lot of it is. I mean, he's holding up to the ball too long, he's making errant passes and decisions and you know, the offense just doesn't have a good flow to it. So why not try Tim Ball? I mean, get him in there and see what he can do. You have nothing to lose at this point. You're four and six. You're trying to make the playoffs. If you lose this game, it's probably going to be, you know, you're probably done, especially in the AFC where it's so much, it's so much competition. But why not try Tim Ball and see if you can create some kind of spark, at least even if it's for a game or so. And is that is part of the struggle that they're having? And because we we witnessed it all happen last season, so obviously there's going to be some carryover from that. It seemed like there were a lot of players on the Jets who did not like Zach Wilson, especially after some comments that he made, which were probably in poor taste about basically taking the blame off of himself as to why there were struggles. Has some of that still been permeating, or has, has he been able to move on past that and try to make up for it a little I bit? I think at people least have moved on past it. I think he's matured a lot you know off the field i think he's been more accountable he understands that you know i'm not playing well he said it the other day like i don't understand why they're bitching me i'm not playing well we're not scoring points so you know it's hard to it's hard to for them to keep me keep them in there if they're not scoring and they're winning they're losing they're, they've lost three straight i mean they had a they had an up and down season as far as roller coaster ride and i think a lot of people even when aaron went down they thought okay this team still might be even, even though I didn't necessarily say this, but, you know, they still might be a team that could contend for a playoff spot because of their defense and special teams. But that hasn't been the case, too. And Zach, like I say, he just hasn't played particularly well. And I think, you know, now what you're finding is, yeah, you talked about Brees Hall and Garrett Wilson. Teams are keying in on them because they're the big weapons. And if you don't have those weapons to, you know, if you take those weapons away, what do you have with the Jets? Not much of anything. You have Alan Lazar, who's been a disappointment. I like Tyler Conklin. He's been really good for him this year. But outside of that, and you have a struggling offensive line that's had, you know, this this is going to be probably their, you know, eighth different offensive line lineup, you know, as in, in 11 games this year, which is, I think, at least the league. So, yeah, I mean, it's been an influx and as far as the offensive line and then, of course, that Wilson's play as well. But, yeah, I definitely think, you know, like I said before, it's not all his fault, but I think he's part of the blame of why the the Dolphins is suffering the way it has. All right, so since you mentioned the offensive line, I wanted to bring this up. We recently heard that Makai Becton, he apparently is going to be pushing to try to make it into that game. They also, I believe, they also activated Dwayne Brown. Um, What do you think the chances are either of those guys end up getting into the game uh, tomorrow? Uh, Well, today, as you all are listening to this, as it will be Friday when this is released. Uh, Betton, when when I saw him, like he was just limping through practice. So I don't know if he's going to play necessarily. I would imagine he might start, he might stay out this week, especially with it being a short week. Um, Brent Dwayne Brown, we'll see. I mean, they the Jets had to activate him or they just looted him for the rest of the season. So I think, you know, from what I understand, Dwayne probably has a better chance Dwayne plays more than Makai Betton at this point. I think Makai is probably going to miss a game or so. Uh, just considering, like I say, it's a short week. He's coming off an ankle injury, low ankle sprain, which is 
you know, good news. It could have been a lot worse, but, you know, on a short week, you know, I have a hard time believing he's probably going to play. All right. So at least the Dolphins won't necessarily have to worry about uh, dealing with two elite bookends at uh, at the tackle position. So at least that's one good thing, because Makai Becton, when he's healthy, I feel like he's really, really good. Yeah, he's been he's played really well this year, you know, outside of one particular game against the Chargers. But, yeah, he's played really, really well, really good football. Uh, it's just the fact that Kenny stay healthy and relatively so this year he has been healthy. Yeah, it's always relative when it comes to guys like that. I know Dolphins fans are well aware of what that feels like having Teron Armstead as their left tackle, who is, uh, it seems like he's chronically injured in some way. It's just a matter of how much pain can he endure. So the other thing, and I just briefly want to touch on this because Dolphins fans are still a little jaded after the offseason hunt. Uh, Dalvin Cook hasn't done a whole lot for the Jets since he got there. Uh, What happened there? Well, I mean, basically, I mean, Brees Hall is the top running back. I mean, <clears throat> I think we all knew that anyway. I think the Jets signed him simply because for insurance, just in case, you know, Brees wasn't 100% or wasn't going to be what he once was when he, when the season started. But he came in week one, ran for hundred and over 120 yards against the Bills on 10 carries and just kind of continued from there. Brees has been struggling a little bit as of late, but I think a lot of that has to do with the lack of passing game. The teams have really stacked the box, put eight or nine men, and, you know, he hasn't been able to get much of anything. So, but as, as it relates to Dalvin, I mean, he just, you know, he didn't have a training camp. You know, he came in, he, he basically signed in mid-August. He didn't start practicing until basically September. So, he, you know, it's hard for somebody to come in and just produce right away, especially as your older player. So it's going to take some time. And I definitely think, you know, him not having a training camp and not having those regular practices like the OTAs and minicamp really hurt him. So I think that really set him back. I think he's made some solid runs as of late. But, you know, I think if you factor that in along with his age, then I think you get kind of the season that he's having right now. Okay, so it's not he hasn't been quite as bad as Dolphins fans want to believe that he. No, has I mean been. it's just it's it's about context. I think it's just you know he really didn't have time to prepare. Like when you come in like late in September, you know, and didn't practice whatsoever. The Jets had already been in training camp for a month and a half out nearly. So yeah, he's going to be behind the eight ball a little bit. Gotcha. All right. So now we'll talk into the real meat and potatoes of what makes this Jets team go the defense. So there is obviously a lot, a lot to say about the Jets defense. Obviously, Robert Saleh, a defensive minded head coach. He's done a fantastic job for them, gotten Quinn and Williams paid, managed to have Sauce Gardner, who is whether no matter what Dolphins fans or anybody else really truly thinks of Sauce Gardner, he is one of the most talented cornerbacks in the NFL. Although I will say this, Antoine, I made a joke on a uh, pulse offense nation earlier this week saying that I said that Tyreek Hill was going to be my zero. When we do our zero and hero picks, I'll kind of express a little bit um, that a little bit later as well. But I just said that all like sauce Gardner gets away with more holding than I've ever seen any corner ever. And so I feel like he's just going to be able to tackle Tyreek at the line of scrimmage and nobody's going to say anything. So that he's was my... handsy. He's very handsy. I mean, I think I think he referees have been calling more holding calls on him because I think teams have been probably complaining. They were probably complaining a lot last year about <laughs> you know him being handsy. But you know, I think some of the best corners look kind of walk that line where you know they're able to you know not necessarily hold all the time, but they you know put their hands on receivers and you know and I think that's what Sauce Gardner does. He tries to get away with a lot, and sometimes he's able to do that, and sometimes he's not. You know, I think he's still that doesn't take away from the fact that, again, he's one of the best cornerbacks in football. You know, whether he you know, think he's the best or not, you know, that's debatable. But what isn't debatable is he's definitely one of the best in the league. Yeah, I'm not going to take that away from him. No, I'm not. I, I, I know that he's a very talented player. Uh, it was more just about like considering what the Dolphins do and how they function, he's perfectly suited to act as a defensive player against Miami's offense, just because yeah. you, you give him a shove at the line and you may or may not hold, but <laughs> that's a different, that's a different discussion. Yeah, I mean, and also like, I mean, I think he did a, you know, as good of a job as you could last year. I mean, especially although this year would be much different when they play in two or twice, well, we'll assume it'd be twice. So they will definitely be, you know, one time uh, on Friday, but yeah, I mean, last year they played basically Scholar Thompson in both games, and you know it, we saw the impact of that. Uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a weird flex by Woody Johnson to talk about how oh the last time the Dolphins came to town, the last time the Dolphins came to town, an independent spotter said Teddy Bridgewater stumbled after one play, and you had to throw in our third string quarterback. Like it just felt like a weird flex from Woody. 
I'm not gonna touch that. Uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. It's one. Yeah, I'll it, touch. I yeah, leave it, that it to me. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from for sure. Because yeah, it was definitely not. Yeah, because you didn't. You didn't have to. You, I mean, Tua didn't play, and like you said, Teddy was out. So, and then Scholar Thompson, the second game, did actually end up beating the Dolphins. I mean, beating the Jets, and they got to the playoffs and you know faced the Bills in the first round. So yeah. So. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put you in that position. I'm just like I'm making my personal <laughs> observation in case for anybody who hasn't checked it out yet. It's like, yeah, that was a weird flex by Woody. Yeah, it's All on right. Twitter. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, anybody it's who's on Twitter, if any, I feel like this should be uh, this should be common practice. This is my personal opinion. If you are a NFL executive of any rank, you should not be on Twitter. I really believe that because I mean, they're, all, they're all on Twitter anyway. It's just a matter of you like, shouldn't be tweeting. Okay. Yeah, I think you can. I mean, I think you can if you're an owner. It's just a matter of what that looks like. Because how many times now? How many times? Let's talk away just away from the Jets. How many times has Jerry, has Jim, or say has any of these owners like come out and said something? I'm like, boy, you just like getting yourselves in hot water, don't you? Like with these comments, Jerry. Jerry just likes the attention, so I think that's where you know he comes in and he has a press conference after every single game. So, which is very unique for an owner. I don't think any other owner does that really in professional sports. At least but he's I also think. like the the uh, the technically he's the GM too. So, I mean, for him, I guess it kind of still sporta. yeah. Even then, GMs really don't talk that. Often. Yeah, this is true. This is very true. As for right. Jim Irsay, I still can't get over when he basically uh, said, yeah, I said I, Jonathan Taylor story. wasn't important. Like, are that, you out of your mind? That that's a whole other story. That's that now that's somebody that probably shouldn't be tweeting. But like, that's what I'm it, saying. It's like it's like not, you you better have one darn think, good personal filter if you're going to be on Twitter. I think it's a case by case basis. I think some people can do it. I think some owners can do it. But and then you just don't tweet all the time. Like you don't have to. You don't have to tweet all the time. It could just be you know once every blue moon. But yeah. they're, they're on there. And then whether they're on there by their name or have a burner account, they're still on there. They see what's going on. All right, so now I'm going to ask you a very uh, Dolphins versus Jets specific question here. So obviously the defense is going to be their most most valuable asset for the Jets. So I wanted to ask you if you were, let's say, let's put you in the shoes of the defensive coordinator. What is the most important thing right now for you to do if you're going to slow down this Dolphins offense? Because we've talked about, oh, just give the guys a shove at the at the line of scrimmage and that'll throw the wide receivers off. Oh, get pressure on Tua. Oh, stop the run. What What, what is your number one priority if you're the coordinator? coordinator defensive coordinator for the jets yeah you definitely got to get out the tour like that's one of my three keys of the game like yeah you get out the tour then you maybe have to force some you know Aaron throws and you know for maybe get some mistakes there fumble interception whatever the case may be and you know if that happens then maybe you can start your offense with a short field i mean that's the only path i think for the jets to win this game is to be able to have their defense force some turnovers get a short field and then score touchdowns that way because if they if they can't force turnovers then I think it's going to be a long day, not only because I think the Dolphins are going to score probably over 20 points, but, you know, you're going to start your offense. The Jets offense is probably going to start, you know, down the field, maybe on the 25 or whatever the case may be. And then it would have struggled an offense like that, that scored one touchdown and basically like 13 quarters, then yeah, it's not necessarily the recipe for success. So yeah, they have to be able to get out the two and hope for, you know, turnovers to, in order to make this a game. All right. So now we'll go ahead and we'll get into our zeros and heroes and we'll make our score predictions here. I'll start with mine since I had talked about it previously. My zero for the game, I said it, Tyreek Hill. I'm going to stand by it, even if it's more of a half joking, half not situation. Like, again, the the way to get to Dol- the Miami Dolphins wide receivers is to put them on put physical contact on them at the line of scrimmage. It's a very timing base. It's very much getting really good releases. If you throw them off their balance, if you somehow and again, in the case of Sauce Gardner, I make the joke and half I, I half made joking and I'm half not. If you can get away with some maybe a little being a little too touchy, then you're going to make it so that Ty, uh, Tua is not going to be able to just find Tyreek wide open in the middle of the field every other play. So I feel like Sauce is going to be able to, to some extent, limit Tyreek. He's not going to be able to shut him down. Nobody can shut down Tyreek. Not completely. Well, I think you also have to watch out because they'll... They um... They won't switch like on sides like him and DJ Reed, who's I think also is very underrated as well. 
But, you know, it'll be sometimes DJ be on Tyreek and then you'll have Sauce on Tyreek Hill because they feel like they have two really good corners, and I think they do. I think they have two of the best quarterbacks in football. You can make the argument, you know, in this game, you know, both teams have two of the best duels as far as quarterbacks in the league. So, yeah, I definitely I think that's a good assessment as well. But, yeah, I definitely think Tyreek's going to be able to get his is whatever he can get it. I don't know how what that looked like. I don't expect him to go for 200 yards or anything like that, but I do expect him to, you know, make an impact on this game. Yeah. And as for my actual hero, um, if I remember correctly from Pulse of Vince Nation, because my, 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 my list is fluid. My list is fluid, depending on just whether I remember from the last show or not, or if I just think about something has changed. Uh, with Robert Hunt looking like he's going to be playing this upcoming week, I don't know that for sure yet, but it looks like he's on the path to being able to, pr- to play because he was basically doing practice all week. I think that Robert Hunt being back in, I think Raheem Mostert is going to be able to get some good rushes. And it, like, I know Quinn Williams is there. I know he does a fantastic job. And I know that defensive front is nothing to sneeze at. But this is a game where I feel like the Dolphins need to have some balance. Otherwise, if the Jets get a little too comfortable with rushing the passer. Yeah, sometimes Tua does struggle when he has to actually think on his feet. I I want him to keep running. I don't want him to fumble, but I want him to uh, try to be, be, be used to getting out of the pocket and maybe taking whatever three or four or five yards and then sliding, not diving, Tua, <laughs> because I feel like that will uh, take some of the pressure off. But I think my hero is going to be Raheem Mostert. I think he'll have a nice good game with, with uh, Robert Hunt being able to toe that line with Connor Williams right there next to him as well. Well, I do. I mean, the Jets are 30th in rush defense. So as good as they're, it's their 11th in total defense, but their rush defense is one of the worst in football. Okay, so, so that means that their pass defense must be like the best ever. If, that, if that's going to rank. It's up there. Yeah, it's up there. They have not, the Jets have not allowed a 300 yard passer in 27 games. I want to say that's the second longest in the NFL right now to the Saints. Impressive. All right. Uh, so my score prediction, I, if I'm not mistaken, I w- I think I had the score of about, I think I said it was like 24 to 14. And I, I remember the guys were making fun of me, like, where are the Jets going to get 14 points from? I'm like, listen, I, I think they're going to score something. Don't like they're, they're going to score somewhere. I don't know how, but they will. They will. They will find a way to score a couple touchdowns. I don't know whether it be on defense or on offense or both. You said a couple. Wow. I, they <laughs> only scored. They only scored two touchdowns in a game twice this year. By the way, I, I say I say the same thing. I say I'll tell you the same thing I told them. I always pick conservatively, just in case. You never know, because you never know. All right, for Ant- so Antoine for the Jets side of things, you're zero, your hero, and what's your score prediction? Uh, I, I think, you know, as far as like, I'll start with the hero. I think you're both, you hit it on bolster. I think, you know, that's the no, 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 for you, for your jet, the Jets, the Jets. Not, oh, not, for the not Jets. The oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, as far as like zero, I think, I don't think Brees Hall is, I mean, as good as he is, I think they're really going to key on him. And I think it's going to be hard for him to, you know, get going. So I guess, you know, that'll probably be the zero for me. Although I think the Jets, if the Jets have any shot to win this game, they have to get him going. I mean, the hero, I mean, it has to be somebody defensively. You know, I think Quincy Williams, CJ, CJ Bosley, one of those guys, I think, you know, as far as getting turnovers and, you know, making impact plays there, I think both of those guys have been two of, you know, the dynamic linebackers in football. So, yeah, I'll go with both of them kind of in a joint way. And I like, I like the Dolphins to win. I think 27 to, the 12, I think it's a good score. You know, Jets, you know, they typically score field goals. I think that's probably what it's going to be this, this game as well. Gutierrez Zerline has been amazing this year. So, yeah, I'll, I'll go with four Zerline field goals for the Jets. <laughs> Okay, I, if that's the case, I need to get him on my fantasy team really quick. Yeah, he, could, he's only missed one field goal this year, so I, I could do, I could use some extra I could use some extra points on my fantasy. If team. you could get them, if you could get them, that is. I, I I need to see. I need to I need to check now that I've now that I think about it because I'm trying to get my. I'm not good at fantasy, folks. I'm I'm really not. Like somehow I'm in fourth place in my fantasy league, my only fantasy league all year. And even then, I'm just like I'm looking at my my roster here. I've got. I've had some bad luck with Aaron Jones. I'll say that he just hasn't done much of anything for me. And all he year. got hurt. Yeah, he got hurt, and but even when he was healthy, he wasn't doing a whole lot for me. So it was a little uh, frustrating. Uh, you, but you, anyway. you pick up AJ Dillon. I didn't get the chance. Somebody uh, else had already picked. Somebody actually actually picked him in the draft near the tail end of it all and said, oh, yeah, A.J. Dillon. So I was like, oh, well, I guess that's out for me. Yeah. All right, sir. Uh, any final thoughts before we bring the show to a close? Uh, I mean, just, you know, it'd be an interesting game. I am know uh, it'd be a ton of Dolphins fans out there, especially. Uh, yes, the MetLife takeover. Yeah. Are you going to go and visit Igor and the guys? 
Yeah, I always do. Yeah, they they know who they know who I am. So yeah, I usually uh, hang out with them a little bit pregame. So it'll it'll be fun. I think this might be the biggest one they've done for a long time, just because of how it, it it's 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 urged some more folks to go in because of how successful the Dolphins have been. Yeah, I think it would have been bigger had it not been the day after Thanksgiving. I thought that kind of hurt a little bit, you know, as far as like people wanting to go because you know it's the holidays, so it's kind of hard for some people to get away from their families or whatever. But yeah, and I think also it's- the really good deals in Best Buy, exactly. <laughs> well, that too, but yeah, I definitely think uh, it still should be a big, you know, draw as far as Dolphin fans and you know, I think Jets fans are kind of you know, a little less optimistic these days with the ways that things are going. Yeah, there might be a lot of booze from both Dolphins fans and Jets fans if uh, things don't get better on offense quick. But, oh, yeah. hey, hey, listen, yeah. Aaron, apparently Aaron Rodgers is listening to Dolphin noises, and apparently it's helping his healing. I, I don't know, man. Maybe he'll be back soon. I, I, I highly doubt. If they, lose, if they lose on Friday, then, like, it's over, really. Like, they have really no path to the play. They would essentially have to win out in order to make the playoffs, and I, I can't really see that happening. Uh, I, I love how you glossed over the Aaron Rodgers dolphin noises thing. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? Yeah, I just yeah. – it's yeah, it's not, not much to say about that. Put it that way. Okay. I got understood, sir. Thank you. All right. That's going to be it for this show. Antoine, thank you so much for joining me. It's always a lot of fun to be able to chit-chat with you. Yeah, any part, anytime. All right. And so for those of you who have not already done so, make sure you go to pricepicks.com. Use that promo code five. That's F-I-V-E. And they will match up to one hundred dollars on your initial deposit when you sign up. And of course, click on the links in the description below this YouTube video to get to my Nintendo store. And you'll be able to get some bonus items when you order Super Mario RPG and or Super Mario Brothers Wonder. It's the best thing that you can get if you're especially if you're a nostalgic gamer or if you're just looking for some new games for your kids to enjoy. Make sure you head on over there. You can get, enjoy some some great deals. All right, Mr. Antoine, thank you for joining me. And for those of you who are also listening early this morning, make sure you join us later on for pregame on the five reasons sports network. We will be ready for you as well there. That's going to be it. We will see you all next week for more Vince nation.